hey fam welcome back to the channel how are y'all doing today we're in for a good one we have a great canning session coming up we are canning believe it or not sweet potato pie filling i really wanted to get it right trying to find some balance in my life i never really put up a fight so i have to tell you this it is not an approved method canning method okay you can do it but it is not something that has been tested it is not in the ball book but this can be done okay and i did it and i want to show you how i did it by the way if i didn't say if you are new to the channel welcome to the channel i hope you stick around for more videos i have a ton of canning videos coming before starting anything you guys make sure you're washing your potatoes get that dirt off so after you wash your potatoes really well under water i then steam them i have uh, a strainer inside of my water bath canner and in this water bath canner i have another strainer and i put a lid over it i let them steam for 20 minutes just to soften up the skin and make it easier to peel. So I'm gonna let these sit here for a little bit. Well, I'm gonna take them out, sit them on the counter, let them cool just a little bit. That way I can then um, handle them better in order to peel them. So they are sitting on the counter. They're still a little too hot to the touch. So I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes and then come back and start peeling. Some of them were a little bit harder than others to get the peel off, but I didn't want to leave them in the steamer any longer than that. And also, um, once you're peeling it, you see the layer underneath the skin, you want to get that off as well. That's going to be a lot of your stringy situations um, once you get to actually blending this up. So next, you want to slice your sweet potato in half then you're going to cube them up. Also, some potatoes will be um, pretty much soft enough where you can peel it with your hands, but you still need to be careful because it is still hot. Potatoes are not cooked all the way through. This is just you're steaming them so it's easier for the peeling to come off. And y'all have um, a bad back. I'm going to therapy for it now, so I had to get my bench and continue to do this sitting down. So I apologize for that. Once you chop up all your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, and put them in your crock pot or whatever you're going to use, do not add any of your spices as of yet. Okay, so I have my sweet potatoes cut up and placed into this crock pot. I'm going to let them cook down. Once they cook down enough where I can then, and they're done, I can then blend them up. I'm either going to blend it while they're still in the crock pot or I'm going to take them out and place them into my KitchenAid over there. While I'm waiting on these to cook down, that's going to take a little while. I'm about to start on my second canning project, which is sweet potatoes, but it's candied sweet potatoes. This is supposed to be six cups of sweet potatoes. So I'm just going to measure this out just to see what I have. This measuring cup is two. Well, if I go to the top, it's three. So that's three cups. It's about 10 cups. 
So this really calls for an immersion blender, but I don't have one. So I'm just trying whatever I have in my uh, kitchen. So I'm going to try to whip this and get some of the strings out of it and also to puree it down a whole lot more. And then I will place it back into the crock pot and we'll go from there with cooking it a little bit more and mashing it down with the potato masher as well as um, the regular blender, hand blender. Also in this stage, do not add any of your um, items, your spices or your vanilla. Don't add anything. Just mix it right on up. I think I'm going to put that immersion blender on my wish list on Amazon. So if anybody want to get that for my birthday or something, which is the 11th, go right ahead. Okay, so we are going to be adding cane sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg and vanilla so it's optional if you want to add pumpkin spice it's optional if you want to add i mean it's optional for any of these whichever ones you like for your um pies when you make them um this is ground allspice and this is cinnamon so i will be using cinnamon i will be using nutmeg and vanilla so i'm going to put it in then i'm going to taste it see if I, you know, want to add more. With the cane sugar, you're going to be doing one cup, because you, if you have six cups of um, sweet potatoes, as you saw, I had about 10 cups of um, sweet potato, so I will be adding more sugar to it, but I'm gonna sweeten mine to taste, but I'm gonna start off with one cup of the uh, white cane sugar and then two cups of the brown sugar and you saw me make the light brown sugar pack it just loosely we're going to do two cups of light brown sugar and this is fresh brown sugar so it's going to have that nice molasses taste to it we're going to do one cup of the um, cane sugar but we want to see what it tastes like so let's go ahead and add our brown cinnamon one tablespoon and one tablespoon of the nutmeg that's nutmeg mm. smells like holiday And you don't add any of your milk, your butter, you don't add any of that or your salt until you actually get ready to pull the pie filling off the shelf and you're about to make your pie. Then you'll add those items to it. So you wanna do one good old tablespoon. My hand mixer has been working better with pureeing it. I really need the immersion blender you guys but well, maybe i can talk my husband in and get Ooh, that smells good. also you guys i added a half a cup of water to this before i put the chopped potato sweet potatoes in there and then as it cooked, it created its own juices. But I also, when I put this back from the blender, well, from the mixer back in here, because it wasn't working with that mixer, I added another half cup. So you're gonna do one full cup of water, but you're gonna do half in the beginning just to create your steam. And then you're gonna do half once you start blending it up. Now that's sweet, but not really. So because I only did one cup of the cane, and I do have more potatoes than the recipe said. I'm gonna do it. So all in all, I did two and a half cups of the cane sugar. And I actually could use a little bit more vanilla if truth be told. 
So I'm going to add a little bit more vanilla. So that'll probably be one and a half. Okay, so let's let it cook a little bit more. Okay, you guys. Turn this off. That off. Have my jars heating up in here for my uh, sweet potato pie filling. I apologize. I do not have the footage of me placing the pie filling into the jars. So what you'll do is you will use your funnel, put that in your jar, start scooping from your crock pot or whatever you're using, scoop the filling into the jar. After you do that, you're going to debubble with a debubbler or a skewer or whatever. You just want to get the air pockets out. And right now I am wiping down the ridges and the rim of the jars. You want to make sure you have a great seal. So I'm using vinegar with my paper towel. When you're dipping your paper towel into your vinegar, make sure you're squeezing out excess vinegar because you don't want that inside of your jar. And you're making sure that you don't have any food around the rim and the ridge. That's why I do both. I don't just do the top, I do the sides as well. I'm holding the jar in my hand, y'all, but the jar is hot, so please be careful when handling these jars. So now it's time for you to get your lids on. So you can do them with your hands if they're not hot, or you can use your debubbler that I'm using and just place them on top of your jars. And then once you get those all on, you're gonna add your rings. When placing your rings on, make sure that they are fingertip tight. And I'm gonna show you where my headspace is that I use. I filled my jars to right below the one inch head space. I got that tip from the Needy Homesteader. So we're almost ready to place our jars into the canner. Make sure you have your canner already warming up, not boiling, but just warming. Now it's time to place your jars into the canner. I was using my hand because although the jars were hot, they weren't too hot where I could not touch them. Otherwise, use your jar lifter to place your jars into your canner. And in my canner, I have about two inches of water. Do whatever your canner calls for. And I also added the extra vinegar that I used to wipe my tops with. I just poured it over into the canner and that will keep your jars from looking funky. Now that it's time to put your lid on, make sure that it is nice and lubed up. I always lube my, lube it, <laughs> I'm sorry. I always grease my um, gasket, the black piece, in around the top of the canner itself just to make sure it's easily going on and off and I don't have an issue with it. But I also check the screw underneath my, um, the dowel gauge because sometimes that can come loose and you will just make sure it's working properly so once your lid is on turn the fire up or whatever you're using turn it up bring it to a boil so we are currently at a full steam out of the vent so now we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes and let this vent out for 10 minutes once it's done venting out, you do the same thing. You, you come back, you get ready to put your regulator on or your weight, whatever you're using, pressure canning session. Again, I am doing pint-sized jars. I'm at elevation over a thousand, so mine is at 11. Check your local extension for what you need to pressure can your um, sweet potatoes at, okay? So now you're gonna turn your timer off. The 10 minutes has vented. And just place that on top. The pressure's gonna start building up in there. Once it gets to my 11 PSI and whatever it is for you, where you are, then you turn your timer back on and because you're doing pints, you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be doing 75 minutes. This is an approved method of canning. This is a tested method of canning right here, okay? 
my pie filling, sweet potato pie filling, is not an approved method. This is just rebel canning. Now, doesn't mean you can't do it, but what it does mean is the one thing I won't compromise on doing is how long I'm going to can it for. Always keep the same time that your canning book calls for, okay? So these called for 75 minutes for pint. I'm doing these 75 minutes because they're pints. I've seen some people water bath can theirs. I would not take that kind of risk ever. So we're almost at our level of 11. Once I get there, I will bring you back and set my timer and we'll just wait for them to get done. But don't walk away from your canner, okay? So as you can see, I'm probably about 13. And y'all know that's my, my max. So I'm gonna turn my eye down. See that? I'm turning my eye down. But it's time for me to set my timer. We'll be back. So look, y'all, I forgot to put one of them in. Too late now, because we, we've already pressurized and it's we got an hour and four minutes left. So guess what we're gonna do with this right here? one day well probably the weekend we are going to make a sweet potato pie with it that's what we're going to do i forgot to start recording you guys i've already taken out a few of them and i can feel them bubbling inside i don't know if you can see it you see it Oh, I'd be so nervous. I'm going to drop it. So this is two, four, six, eight. I had nine of these, but you guys, I forgot to put one of the sweet potato pie fillings in the um, canner. So I put it in the refrigerator because I am going to, oh, you heard that? I'm going to actually make a sweet potato pie. So I got nine okay i had 15 pounds of sweet potatoes i originally bought two bags from sam's club they were um about five dollars and some change and they were five pounds so i said well i need i want to just do both so i went back to sam's got another one and that made 15. So you guys, this is saving so much money, $15. And I got all of these jars of food to go on my shelf just in case, you know, we don't have power. We don't have this or that. I can still bake even if I don't have power because I have propane and I can still use my oven. But this is something you need to think about doing in order to save money because food is is continuing to go up. It's becoming even more scarce. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're going to try this recipe and I'll see you guys in the next video. So what I'm going to do is let these cool overnight in the morning. I will wash them down with nice soapy water, take the rings off, dry them off, label them and store them on my shelf. And I know most of you come here and you watch, you know, the stories that I tell you about the news is what's going on in the world. But guys, this is showing you that you can store your food. You can create a food pantry. These videos are just as important as those news videos because I'm showing you how you can create food security in your home. I haven't even put this stuff up yet okay i got to put another storage shelf down in my pantry i forgot to mention that one pint size is supposed to make you two nine inch pies or one deep dish pie so i forgot to record me making these pies from that jar that i forgot to can up but guys this tastes so good check the description below